Good evening and welcome back to the show. A cup of tea at breakfast or after a meal is not strange in Western Kenya, but the love for that hot beverage could be catastrophic. Or is it? KTN's Willie Lusiga tells us more of a type of a cancer that has been associated with too much hot tea. Take a look. In front of his family, he gathers energy to walk. A moment of hope, the will to fight, and the courage to let go. He has been fighting to survive for the last few months with severe pain in the throat and inability to eat. He is a throat cancer warrior. <laughs> It is turning out to be the biggest killer cancer in Kenya's western region. It is creeping into the Rift Valley region too. The increasing number of new cases recorded daily is alarming. Esophageal cancer, commonly referred to as throat cancer, showed its ugly face in this region and is causing agony to families here. This region, that is uh, the west, western and uh, north rift, we, it is true, it is true that uh, cases of uh, throat cancer have been on the increase. We attend to all types of cancers. But if you ask me, the majority of patients we are seeing here in Kakamega Hospice are coming in with uh, throat cancer. And uh, it's both men and women. Not so good because we lose so many. <laughs> Behind the alarming statistics are people who bear the pain and struggle of fighting this disease. People like Ali Idi Tamba. <laughs> Ali was diagnosed with throat cancer one year ago. One afternoon in July 2018, after enjoying a scrumptious meal, Ali decided to wash it down with a glass of water. As he did, something strangely happened. <laughs> Unable to eat for a number of days and with his health deteriorating, Ali went from hospital to hospital trying to find out exactly what was the problem. Eventually, he was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. His life, he says, was never the same again. Apart from other predisposing factors, Ali's throat tumor was linked to his love for hot tea. His family admits that they are addicts of hot tea, but now they are more cautious about it. Hmm? Mm. As his condition worsened, Ali underwent an esophageal stent procedure to help him eat. Through the procedure, a tube is placed in the esophagus or the throat of a patient to keep open an area blocked by the tumor. The tube allows solid and liquid to pass. <laughs> However, a few months after the stand in session, 
With his family having to spend their last penny on Ali's treatment, his condition began getting worse. The family got helpless and finally were forced to just watch as their father got weaker and weaker every day. Their prayer that this cloud will pass and Ali will be able to live a better life again. Regina Shivokwambani, a self-confessed addict of hot tea, smiles as she tries to hide her pain. She and her husband are both staunch Christians who have never tasted alcohol nor smoked cigarettes. Chakula ya mama tu ni chai. Hiyo tu hata hata heru mnyime kitu kingine lakini chai ndio ilikuwa chakula yake kabisa. Sababu wakati tuliendanga X-ray yama tunaenda kikomble ni kifua. Daktari kitu ya kwanza alikuwa anamuuliza mama unavuta sigara? Mama unakunywa una pombe? Na hizo vitu zote hatumii. In 2017 Regina began feeling chest pains, losing her weight and noticing a change in her skin color. A number of hospitals were unable to find out exactly what was ailing her, but finally there was a clue. Kuendelea 2018, she sana. After close examination through an endoscopy, she was diagnosed with throat cancer and immediately put on treatment. Her health has now improved, although she has to endure excruciating pain. Dr. Yaltufanya hiyo test, akatuambia mama ako na tumor. Na kwa kaya mwenye wanaona ni kanzo ya esophagus. Ina mwuma sana. Kudoka siku hile mbaka saa hii, sasa ngufu ya kinaisha. Hakuna chetia kufanya sasa, hakuna chuchota. Regina and Ali are just two of many esophageal cancer patients throughout the extensive western region. What is behind the high number of cases of this particular cancer in this region compared to other types of cancer? The right answer can only be found here. The Kakamega Referral Hospital Cancer Center, the only cancer center in the entire western Kenya that hosts the second largest community in the whole country in terms of population. The facility was officially opened in 2018. At the cancer center, patients given just months to live are keeping cancer a bay longer. But how does taking hot tea expose one to throat cancer? <laughs> Within the communities in Western Kenya, tea is not only served extremely hot during breakfast, but throughout the whole day and accompanying every meal. Locals agree that they can skip a meal, but not tea. They enjoy it when it is served very hot. After years of researchers warning that popular hot tea poses danger, the reality seems to be manifesting itself. Cancer of the throat is our leading uh, cancer here by about 60% uh, of the patients we are seeing now are diagnosed with the cancer of the throat. Cancer is among top three killer diseases in the country and number two among non-communicable diseases with a mortality rate of 7%. This is the only cancer center in the entire region serving approximately 10 million people. But shockingly, all the cases that have been reported here, 60% are made of throat cancer cases. What is it that is making the people of Western region more prone to throat cancer? Is it the food that they eat? Is it the drinks that they take? Or even, is it about their lifestyle? That is a puzzle that we want to solve. They say Western we like taking a lot of tea and hot tea for that case. When you take a lot of hot fluid or hot food, you, as you burn the cells of the throat, you, you change them. They start mutating differently. That predisposes someone somehow. It is not 100%.
Yes, it is true that uh, some statistics link it with the drinking uh, hot uh, drinks, especially. Uh, but we have not done uh, our own research to document that. But that has been documented elsewhere is a significant risk factor. Talk of hot beverages, talk of hot tea, because mostly it's tea which is taken a lot. Those are the things that make the mutating cells that you are mutating in your body mutate even faster. In May 2019, scientists investigating a possible connection between the average temperature of tea that people consume and cancer of the throat published their finding in the Journal of Cancer Epidemiology. The research, which began in northeastern Iran and other countries, including western Kenya, studied drinking habits of 50,045 people aged 40 to 75 between 2000 and 2017. The report indicated that people who take tea hotter than 60 degrees Celsius and consumed more than two large cups of tea per day had a 90% high risk of esophageal cancer when compared to those who drank less tea at cooler temperatures. When we talk of uh, things like taking tea, of course there is the aspect of lowering the, the temperature and whatever. But again, you, you know, such studies have a lot of uh, criticism. The report also investigated the cause of many throat cancer cases in western Kenya. The findings suggested that people in Kenya, particularly in the West, drink the hottest tea in the world. I think bada magic to milk when chai. I love bada lunch and tapiga chai come on a fast apatikana. I love pia John as a mani pata kombe, then pata sapa. Still in 2019, another study conducted at Tenwek Hospital in Bomet County revealed people in western Kenya prefer their tea at temperatures exceeding 72 degrees Celsius, the highest recorded so far in the world. The study, which involved 100 men and women, further revealed that the temperature at which Kenyans drink their tea is higher than Tanzania, Brazil, China, Germany, US, Iran, and the UK, areas of higher esophageal cancer. Tenwek Hospital has stood out as the most preferred hospital for referral of throat cancer patients from other hospitals across the country due to its capacity and capability of handling the disease. A 2018 China-based study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine found out that drinking hot tea when combined with heavy alcohol and tobacco use significantly increases the risk of throat cancer. <laughs> In 2016, the World Health Organization said drinking tea and other beverages at temperature hotter than 65 degrees Celsius probably causes cancer. So how worried should tea lovers really be? In 2019, a report presented before a parliamentary committee by the National Cancer Institute, NCI, specified Kenyans are more likely to die from throat cancer than any other types of cancer. According to the data presented before the Health Committee, out of 365 new throat cancer cases reported monthly, only two survive, a shocking revelation that makes it among the worst killer cancers in the country. 
At number three, among top new cancer cases, cancer of the esophagus has 4,380 new cancer cases annually, behind cervical at 5,250 cases, and breast cancer topping with 5,985 new cancer cases annually. Breast cancer is number one, followed by cervical cancer closely, and closely followed by cancer of the throat. Yeah, those are the, the top three. While studies indicate throat cancer is more prevalent in areas where tea is taken hot, others indicate tea can trigger throat cancer even when taken cold as long as milk used to prepare the tea has harmful and carcinogenic chemicals. It is how this milk is treated by different people using bad chemicals that are killing us slowly. That is why maybe cancers are on the rise. A carcinogen is any substance or radiation that promotes carcinogenesis, the formation of cancer. Because people have become money-oriented, those with the dairy business have sick cows, they treat them today, they're selling the milk the same evening to the same people. The milk ATMs in, in urban areas are preserving the milk with dangerous chemicals on your good days walk around ATMs, you rarely get milk that is spoiled, put aside. All their milk is fresh, Monday to Friday, Monday to Monday. Unhealthy milk production process and use of too much preservatives to make milk stay fresh longer is now turning milk to be a health hazard and dangerous to consume either alone or as tea. Health records also indicate that there is an increasing number of throat cancer cases among the members of the Kalenjin community who reside in the northern and southern areas of Rift Valley. The north and southern part of Rift Valley comprising an important agricultural area in Kenya. Going uh, by the available literature about this region, that is uh, the west, western and uh, north rift, we, it is true, it is true that uh, cases of uh, throat cancer have been on the increase. Five-year data from Eldoret Cancer Registry regarding cancer prevalence in Uasinigishu County, an area resided mainly by the Kalenjins, show throat cancer to be the most common cancer. What is the cause? There was a, a certain group that did research in Rift Valley. They talked of they associated it with Mursik because it is also prevalent in Rift Valley. From the experience I've seen, it is not the question about the milk that people in Rift Valley are taking and as lawyers are taking hot tea. It is the milk and what is put in that milk. Mursik, a traditional fermented milk, is part and parcel of Kalenjin culture and is usually drunk after most meals. The milk is prepared in a calabash coat, locally known as sotet, which is lined with soot from particular trees to add flavor. It is often served at room temperature and can be consumed as it is or with cornmeal mash, known as ugali. Experts indicate that similar to Western Kenya's hot tea, mursik is slowly turning unsafe. The fear is that mursik may contain mycotoxins, which are toxic metabolites produced by fungi that normally contaminate agricultural cereals either in the field, during harvest or storage, and are mainly associated with cereal crops. Mycotoxins include aflatoxin, which are non-human carcinogens. Aflatoxin will cause carcinogenic effects and usually the most common types of cancer you'll get from aflatoxin is the liver cancer and the kidney. Though it can affect other organs, but mostly liver and the kidney. The fear is that mursik may contain myotoxins, which are toxic metabolites produced by fungi that normally contaminates agricultural cereals either in the field, during harvest or storage, and are mainly associated with cereal crops Myotoxins include aflatoxin, which are known human carcinogens. Rift Valley is known to be the breadbasket of the country. Rotten crop harvest pieces are no longer discarded, but are either converted to animal feeds for dairy cows or milled and sold to Busa brewers. This directly introduces mycotoxins to the food chain, either through consumption of fresh milk, tea or mursik, as well as local brewed alcohol. I relate that to to the local social demographic 
life of the people in this region. Like uh, there is a lot of uh, alcohol drinking, to be specific, Changa and Busa. This meat eventually was consumed by Kenyans. Are you fearful that Kenyans may have consumed maize that contains afrotoxin? I'm more than 100% sure that it affects people and that within the next 10 to 15 years, we'll also have serious cases of cancer based on this miss. This is true. And at that particular time, maybe our infrastructure, health infrastructure would have worked and maybe we will be having more people in hospital. So when you eat that maize, you get the toxin in the body and therefore the, the effects of that uh, toxin. You'll realize it's a national issue, like, like when you talk of Ugali, you know, and then that's an, a stable food. So at an individual level, there's really nothing much you can really do about that. Experts also warning consumers to be more careful when buying food from supermarkets. I keep on asking myself every day, how come when you go to the open air market, you find tomatoes that, are, that have spots, a shelf in a supermarket, that is so clean. None has a spot on it. The ones that attract our eyes so much. Most people who are eating healthy tell you they buy their foods from supermarket, clean food. They avoid the open air market. If you could ask me personally, I prefer food from the open air market that doesn't look so clean, but yet it's from the farmer to the market. Zaza siku hizi tumesahau hata ile chakula yetu ya kawaida ya zamani. Leo ni mtu kwenda dukani processed food, processed this, processed that. A nurse at Kakamega Hospice, Rose has been offering palliative care to cancer patients. The highest number of those under her care are ailing from throat cancer. So in essence when somebody comes in with an advanced cancer you may find they are not uh, eligible for chemotherapy, they are not eligible for maybe radiotherapy, or even for interventions like surgery. You are not God. You cannot tell somebody, it's true you're going to die tomorrow or the other day or after a month, but we start taking it as a journey. So you walk with this patient knowing that Cancer is not something that comes today and tomorrow is gone. If you're taking tea and you feel it's burning you, then that is not the right temperature. You can take tea, you're comfortable swallowing. Not, not very hot and not cold. Hey, Anokunya. But yes, I took him there, Anapoesa. It's not all doom, though as these are a number of ways one can prevent the disease or be able to detect it earlier enough. We need to start looking into some of these things and getting back to our basics. Just getting physically active actually reduces the risk of uh, getting most cancers by over 70 percent. Lowering cigarette smoking or ceasing from smoking, watching our diet. Most people are silent about it. People are not giving it energy. The only thing you will hear when uh, in funerals, and I think I believe funerals cannot sort out this issue. It's required to come up with national policy guidelines on how this cancer issue will be sorted. And a national policy guideline should be taken to parliament so that we have a law on how this cancer is going to be handled or managed in this country. While this being the only cancer center serving the entire Western region, it has a number of challenges that is facing. We don't have enough personnel. We don't have, good, we don't have adequate equipment. We don't have adequate space. Yeah, we need training. When you come to Western here, we do not have a radiotherapy machine. People are being sent to Kenyatta. Again, those are expenses for some families. Our wish is more and more would be done so that people are diagnosed early. I can say here in Western, we suffer from late diagnosis. The cancer survivors as a simple message to the society. Wakonjo kama mimi, wasikufe moyo ati wamepata cancer. 
kwanza ni ugonjwa tu kama malaria ukifuatilia na tipiwa tu na upone it is bad news for tea drinkers from Kenya's western region who are among those who take the hottest tea in the world Milk is considered as nature's single most complete food and is definitely one of the most valuable and regular consumed foods. But at the same time, it is highly vulnerable to chemicals even when produced by health animals and during preservation. It is therefore critically important to ensure milk safety and avoiding too hot tea. What is in your drink might end up killing you. Willie Lusige, KTN News, Cup of Cancer.